bullpens being separated from the dugout. I hate being separated from my teammates. It's my least favorite thing about being in the bullpen. Probably breaking up the double play. I don't like that you can't take out the second baseman or shortstop. That I get a hit all the time. No, I have zero at bats in the big leagues, which is why the rule needs to be changed to let me bat whenever I'm up there. Drop third strike rule and that being an earned run. <laughs> I'd love to have four strikes. That would make it so much better. I would just make sure that these playoff proposals wouldn't go through. The game's pretty damn good the way it is. You know, all these changes we're trying to make to it right now, I agree with Trevor, it's they're crap. You know, leave it alone, the game's great. Let them wear their <laughs> fucking cleats. A lot of people want the DH to come to the National League. That's something that I can get behind for a couple different reasons, but I understand why people don't want to considering the tradition of baseball. Have a run rule. If it hits the pole, it's foul. No PFPs in camp. <laughs> the clock for a bullpen guy to run in. Was, two minutes is not long enough to run in, especially in like a place like Detroit. Give me the DH in the National League. I'm tired of seeing guys like Dallas attempt to get in the batter's box. Pitcher hitting in the NL. Uh, only hire announcers who like baseball. Since driveline's kind of the basis for this, kind of how we're talking about it, there was um, some work done this off season that we were working on a new slider. So it's something that's completely new to me, um, throwing more of a sweeping slider. And it was designed more after like Jose Fernandez slider. So you're holding it a little bit deeper in the hand and actually presetting the wrist and just cranking on as hard as I can, which probably fits better with my personality instead of trying to finesse something in there, it's just go at it as hard as you can, you know, kind of like the fastball. So this is just a four seam fastball. I'm working on making this better um, through spin, efficiency, and through velocity. So this is, for me, gonna be the pitch for me this year. I was always, uh Never had any type of breaking ball in my entire life. Literally, I pretty much got to the big leagues with a fastball and changeup. And so my first big league camp, my goal was to figure out like how to throw a breaking ball. And so at the time, I had, we had Johnny Venters, Craig Kimbrell, uh, who had two pretty damn good breaking balls. And um, uh, so as soon as camp started, I went up to both of them, asked them how, to, how they throw their uh, breaking balls, and they both threw a spike. Um, you know, uh, Craig held, uh, Craig and Johnny both went kind of across the two seam like, like that. Um, one was a little higher, one was a little lower, if I, if I recall correctly. So I started there, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, good two strike pitch, had trouble commanding it, but that was kind of the start of uh, me f finding a decent breaking ball that would give me a third pitch so I could stay, stay a starter. Um, and it kind of morphed into uh, playing with different grips and seams on the ball um, until I finally was in LA one day uh, in 2014, I think it was and was just in the dugout and found this grip that felt real comfortable. I threw it the next day in the bullpen and it was really good. I, I punched Hanley Ramirez. I remember the first inning on a really good one. I was like, all right, this is it. And so it's kind of gone back and forth uh, with, a, with a profile uh, over the years, depending on kind of how, where I was at mechanically. But, uh, uh, you know, my goal right now has been to try and get it a little bit more horizontal uh, on it. So just kind of feeling my hand work through the ball to create more side spin. Uh, it's, been, it's been fun. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. This last season in Arkansas, we had, I think it was a 12 and a half hour bus ride home from Corpus or something. We had one bus, 40 dudes on there. It was not pretty. And we didn't get home until about 7.30 in the morning. We were in Ogden, Utah, and the AC broke on an eight hour road trip. And some of the guys um, thought it was funny to pee on the bus. And they peed on the bus. Yeah, and then the AC broke, so I was shirtless, sweating, sharing a seat on a bus with urine smelling, and um, eight hours to Idaho Falls from Ogden, Utah, that was tough. Um, don't wanna do that again. Just multiple, like, eight to 10 hour bus rides where through the night where we didn't stop for food, and it was just like, I, that that happened way too often, and many guys can probably tell you that, so it's just a constant. Dovetailed off the peanut allergy. We were in New Hampshire, Double A, with Trenton. I was with the Yankees. Uh, we had we ate fine, went home fine. Back at the hotel, I woke up and I thought I had pink eye when I woke up, but I guess I had gotten peanuts all over my hands, and throughout the night I had rubbed my face and basically swole my whole face shut, and I had to go on like 
the not the DL, but I was unavailable for like three days because I just couldn't see. So that was a bad day. Oneonta, New York, um, in the New York Penn League, and it was rough. My first year in 06, um, just tough environment. You know, we talk about small locker rooms, it was tiny. And uh, they had a single column shower in the middle with three heads. Two of them worked, and they had plywood floors with one drain that would just get backed up and to be up to your shin in mud. So there, that's the long and the short of it. Worst day I had in the minor leagues was when I had a back spasm in going into September. The worst day I experienced minor league, uh, off the top of my head, we were in Low A in Asheville, North Carolina. The bathroom was broke. We had to use a bucket for a toilet, and all we had was PB&J and hot dogs for pregame. <laughs> it was tough. It was a tough day. I would have to say um, we, were, we were driving at Grand Junction, Colorado, all the way from Billings, Montana. It was like 15 hour drive and it was the worst thing ever and had a double up and it was just terrible. Like th at that moment, I really wanted to like just quit and just go home. I like literally, I threw like 45 pitches in the first inning. I didn't get an out and got pulled from a game. Like I didn't know you could pitch worse than I did that game. And I remember like, it was the worst day because it was the first time I truly thought like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna get to the big leagues. I just pitch like as bad as you can. I don't know if I'm gonna get to the big leagues. Missoula, Montana, traveling somewhere on our bus. And we like come over this hill, it's like a long, you know, normal six hour bus ride. And there's a car flipped over on the side of a road. It was kind of shitty, but good. Um, our, we stopped the bus, our trainer ended up getting off and I actually ended up saving the guy's life because he, you know, obviously knew somewhat of a medical background. Um, and the car was flipped over. Apparently it like just happened. Um, the guy was thrown from the car and he was able to keep him stable until the ambulance, everything got there. And we, the bus obviously had to leave because, um, you know, we were going to the, going to the game or going on our, on the road trip. And he ended up, the officers ended up basically taking him all the way. It was like three more hours to the city we we're going to and ended up bringing him all the way there. But he ended up like saving the guy's life and keeping him alive until the ambulance got there. The first time in your entire life you struck out consecutively in four bats. That's like always the worst day you've had. Bus once traveling from, I was in Bowling Green, Kentucky at our home ballpark, which was a low A for the, the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. And we were going to, I want to say West Michigan. And it's like a 10 hour trip. And we were an hour into our trip and literally our engine exploded and caught on fire and there were fumes and, and flames, like you could see the flames out, out the side of the window and there are there fumes coming through the, the, the bus. And so like the, the bus driver didn't stop immediately. We we're like telling him, he's yeah, got, you have to stop. We need to get the F off this bus. So we got off the bus, it was middle of the night and we all get off and you know, the next closest bus, like in the minor leagues, they're not like gonna like, hey, call, call them the closest bus company. Let's get these guys up. So literally we had to wait and take taxis to, uh, you know, each, you know, groups of four or five guys take a taxi to, you know, the, uh, I guess the closest rest stop. And we waited for a bus to come like three hours from where original, the first one left. Then we got all on the bus and, and then continued onward. Oh, dude, we had no air conditioning uh, in AA this year on a bus ride from Mobile to Jacksonville. It's like seven hours straight. And like majority of the bus was sharing seats and like, Dude, that, that's brutal. I mean, there's there's a lot to choose from. You know, everybody's kind of on the Kobe train right now, especially for as much as he did, not only for his own sport, but for just humanity in general. LeBron James is a freak of nature. LeBron James. LeBron James. Reggie Miller. You have to respect everything that kind of a guy like Alex Ovechkin can do. I mean, coming over, just go to 700th goal. Uh, it's a big deal. I think it's what four guys that have ever done it before. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Tiger. Tom Brady. Luke Keekley for the Carolina Panthers. Russell Westbrook. Sean White. I really like Shaquille O'Neal. I'll go Eli Manning. Uh, I mean, I really like Floyd Mayweather. Well, I'd probably go with Tom Brady. I'm not even a Patriots fan. I just like Tom Brady, how many times he's won a Super Bowl, the fact that I'm not a very aesthetically pleasing guy, but it's nice to know a skinny fat dude can become something, a six time Super Bowl champion. What did he run, like a 540, something crazy like that. So I like his story, he seems to be a good dad and he's just an overall winner, so I'm a big Tom Brady guy. 
It's not the worst, but like if I got asked about the trade one more time, I'm gonna be a little upset. What happened on that strikeout? But it's just the, the generic ones. Like, oh, how did you feel today? Well, I sucked. I gave up six. What do you think I'm gonna feel like? How do you feel you pitched today? And I just gave up like, I just put up, a, gave up a four spot. It's like, what do you mean, bro? How do you think I felt? Like, what? The worst question is when they ask you whatever question you just answered for the last week consecutively. So uh, in spring training right now, as we film this, the worst question is, oh, you know, how do you feel about the Rockies this year? And then I have to, <clears throat> then I have to make up something that I haven't already said just to entertain myself. And then kind of sometimes you'll see like what you can get away with on camera. Well, did you, you know, did you mean to throw that pitch like that? Did you mean to, you know, he, he obviously, you know, he got, you know, hit a homer to this. Did you mean to throw that? Obviously, I didn't mean to throw that pitch there. If you hit a homer on it and it threw it around in the middle, obviously not. So why are you asking the question? Probably something like, why do you think you're striking out so much? And I want to be like, I don't know, because the guy's throwing 99 miles an hour with a 90 mile an hour slider, and the umpire's a freaking imbecile sometimes. After I gave up a homer to lose a game, if I could take that pitch back. Like, of course I want to take that pitch back. I mean, what? that's the worst question I've ever been asked.